of a meter rule or the meter scale by using a balancing method. Figure 1.1 shows the operators. So what student is using? Student place a load on one side and pivoted the meter rule and the weight, the turning effect or the moment caused by the weight of the meter rule balances with the turning effect or the moment caused by the load P. When the two moments are balanced, the object will be in equilibrium. It will not topple or rotate. Student places the meter rule on the pivot. He places the load P on the meter rule at 90 centimeter mark and keeping a load P at 90 centimeter mark. Then he adjusted the position of a meter rule or a meter scale on the pivot so that the meter rule is near as possible balance. He record the distance A from 90 centimeter mark to the pivot and he record the distance B from the pivot to 50 centimeter mark. He repeats the steps and placing a load P at 85, then 80, then 75, and then 70. So A and B readings are shown here, 21, 19.1, 18, 17.2, 16, 14.1, 13, 11.8, and 10.5, and 9.5. So we have to plot a graph because the next plot a graph for A on Y axis and B on X axis, and you do not need to begin Axis at the origin. So we don't have to start with 0, 0, we can start with any number. So I'll rewrite the values so that uh, I can plot a graph for A, it is 21, 18, 16, 13, and 10.5. And for B, it is 19.1, 17.2, 14.1, 18.5, 17.2, 9.5 and we don't have to start the axis from origin so we can start with any number so plot a graph and you don't have to start the graph from 0 comma 0 a should be on y axis and b on x axis so on y-axis, we should have A. On x-axis, we'll have B. And it's one mark is for label the axis. So we are plotting on y-axis, it is A. And the unit of A is in centimeter. Same thing on x-axis, B is there. And the unit of the B is also in centimeter. So when you check the minimum and the maximum value, as we don't have to start from origin, the minimum value of the A is 10.5 and the maximum value is 21. So I can start this axis with say 10, 12, like the first value, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, 22 and then 24. And for B, the minimum value is 9.5 and the maximum is 19.1. So I have to select a scale from 9.5 uh, or from, I can have this, like I can start with say 9, then 11, then 13, 15, 17, 19, and then 21. So on X axis, because uh, 10 boxes equals to two, so each box is uh, 10 boxes equals to two, so each box is 0 0.2. And on Y axis, again, the same, 10 boxes equals to two, so each box is equals to 0 0.2. So we have to plot this result, like A is 21 and 19.1, So first A is 21, this is 21, and the other one, B is 19.1.
So 21 and 19.1, this is 19.2 because each box will present two. So this will be 19.1 in between. And 21, this one is 22. So 19.1 is there. Each box is representing 0.2. So this the one box is 19.2. So in between them will be 19.1. And 21 is there. So between 20 and 22, so this will be 20.2, 20 4, 6, 8, and 21. So this will be the first point 21 and 19.1. Then the second point is 18 and 17.2. So A is 18 between is the number there so 16, 18, 20, and 22. So what first one is 21 and 19.1 to 21 and 19.1. This will be 21. 20.2, 4, 6, 8, and 21 and 19.1. Then it is 18 and 17.2. So 18 and 17.2. Then 16 and 14.1, 16 and 14.1. Point one will be here. Then we have thirteen and eleven point eight. So thirteen eleven point eight. Eleven point two four six and eleven point eight. And then ten point five is there. 10.2, 10.4, and 10.6. So between them, 10.5 and 9.5. So this would be 10.2, 4, and 6. This is 10.6, and this one is 9.2, 9.4, and 9.6. And between them, this would be 10.5. So we support here, we will have. So these points are not appearing on the same line. So we have to draw a line of best fit. A line of best fit means the number of the points above and below should be same. Like if I have two points below, I should have two points above. We have to check which one is a line of best fit. So as you can see here, When I join these points, one of the point is below, one of the point is above, and remaining three points are on the line, so it means this is a line of best fit. Then the next part, we have to find the gradient. So how to work out the gradient? The formula for the gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if you want to calculate the gradient of a straight line, that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You have to take any two points you can take. Don't take the same points. You can take any two points. And the distance between the two points should be 5 centimeter or more for an accurate answer. So first point which you will take on y-axis, that is called y1. The first point on y axis is y1. The first point on x axis is x1. The second point on y axis is called y2. And the second point on x axis is known as x2. 
So we'll have this one will be y1, y2, x1, x2. So y2 equals to 20 minus y1 is equal to 12 divided by x2. So this appeared to be out 17.2468 and then 18, 18.2. Minus y1, so this one is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this one is 10, point, 10 is there, 10.24. So this up here, 10.8. This is 10.8. So 20 minus 12, that is equals to 8. And 18.2 minus 10.8. to 7.4. So 8 divided by 7.4 that is 1.08. The gradient of this and you have to show these lines like you have to draw these lines to show why, where is y1, y2 and x1 and x2. You have to draw these lines. In exam one mark is for just drawing these lines identifying the points and the second mark is for the final answer. So the gradient is 1.08. Calculate the weight W1 of a meter rule by using a formula gradient G into P. So gradient we work out that was 1.08. So G multiplied by P and the value of the P is 1. So 1.08 multiplied by 1. So if 1.08 multiplied by 1, we'll get the same answer 1.08. And because it's a weight of an object, weight is a force, so the unit will be newtons. So the sec this one, the second mark is for writing a correct unit for the weight. So just one practical reason why it is difficult to obtain the accurate reading of A and B in this experiment. So why practically it is difficult to get the exact or accurate value for A and B. The main reason, like main difficulty for this experiment is difficult to balance the meter rule when the load is placed on it. So we can, it's very hard or difficult to get the accurate balancing point. So the answer here, you can mention the main difficulty that it is difficult to balance the meter rule when load is Place on it. That's why we cannot get the exact value or accurate value for A and B. Or what else you can mention? The second thing you can also mention, like difficult here, there is no marking on P. So it's hard to identify the center of the P by looking at the object. Like when I'm looking at the object and there's no marking on the object. So I it's hard or it's difficult to identify the exact position where the center lies. So that can also be a possible answer. You can mention that it's difficult to identify the center of the load P. That's why we cannot uh, have an accurate value for A or B. Or as I mentioned in the beginning, that difficult to balance the meter rule when the load is placed on the meter. The student measured the mass of a meter rule on the balance. Write down the mass to nearest gram. So what will be the whole number? One, 112.65. Use a screen annotation to write this mass here to the nearest graph. 112.65 grams to the nearest whole number. Hundred and twelve point six five nearest to Can use the screen annotation to state the answer for this one. Now we want the nearest whole number. This is 112.65. If you want 112.65, the nearest whole number is 130. So this is to the nearest gram, this is 130. 
this won't be because see this mass is in gram we want to get the weight which is in newton so remember whenever we use the formula w equals mg weight is mass multiplied by gravity the mass should always be in kilogram so this formula weight is mass into gravity the mass should be in kilogram but here the mass is in gram so first what you have to do you have to convert it to kilogram to so divide by 1000 so when we divide by 1000 it will be 0.113 kilogram and then now we apply the formula so 0.113 multiplied by 10 which is 1.13 newtons so if you don't convert the gram into kilogram and directly substitute in the formula then your answer will not be correct the reason is that because this formula is valid weight is equals to mass into gravity this is valid if the mass is in kilogram not in gram so don't forget to convert the mass from gram to kilogram before substituting in this formula state and explain whether this value of w2 will be considered equal to w1 like we are getting this as w1 1.13 w2 is 1.13 w1 was 1.18 1.08 it was so when we calculated the w1 that was 1.08 when i calculate w2 that is 1.13 can i say w1 and w2 are equal yes or no yes so because 1.08 is approximately equal to 1.1 so both values like if i round this off this rounded off to 1.1 if i round this off this is also rounded off to 1.1 so it means two values are so state and explain whether w2 is considered to consider equal to w1 so we will say yes that w2 and w1 or w2 are uh, close values or statement shows that like the result shows that 1.08 is approximately equal to 1.13 so you will say yes and then you can quote the values that the value of a w1 is 1.08 which is approximately equal to 1.1 and value of a w2 is 1.13 which is approximately equal to 1.1 so both values are equal